I think it's really interesting how when Disney Plus was first shown off, when it first uh, released to the public, when people were first starting subbing, people, everyone agreed this service was a huge success. Like, oh, look at all these Disney movies. Look at this. Look at all the stuff you have access to. If you just subscribe, right? Subscribe to Disney Plus. Like, you... You had all this talk about what a big deal this service was and how it was like, you know, the vault is open now and how this was a big deal for Disney and how they successfully managed to set up this streaming service. And it wasn't true at all, right? Like Disney Plus is a massive, massive failure. Like people are unsubbing on Moss. Like Disney's having all these problems with their with their new films, with the parks, with like basically every avenue, right? And a big part of that is Disney Plus, because keeping all of those shows on the service is ludicrously expensive to the point where uh, the company isn't even able to do it. Right? They they are very, very, very much struggling to keep everything going. Right? Like it, it, it's costing them like what, like a billion dollars a year. You know, people are unsubbing all the time. Like the service is a failure. Right. In spite of that initial push to gaslight you into thinking it was successful. What does this have to do with gaming? Game Pass is in the exact same position. There was an initial big push to to trick people into thinking this was a good deal, that this was going to be the new major thing in gaming, that you would only have to pay like $15 a month that like. You know, you would be swamped with major releases to play all the time, that the service was a big deal. And of course that isn't true, right? If you're if you're like me and actually play a lot of games and go through everything, you realize very quickly that like uh the the release schedule is crap. Like there's just not enough games on Xbox to justify that kind of subscription. Like you could either pay like for one month of Xbox Game Pass. Or you could just play, or you could just buy Hollow Knight. Like, what? What exactly would you prefer to do in that scenario? Like, there is no real appeal in having a subscription service for games, right? Like, it just doesn't work, right? Like Nintendo's uh, Nintendo Switch Online service is much superior, in which they tie like the uh, the the retro their retro games in with well their, their classic games in with their online subscription fan uh plans and you know other other things that you they give you for free like a uh, free DLC and stuff like that like Game Pass doesn't do that right you know the Nintendo Switch online service is objectively in spite of like the the very real backlash and antagonism that the service still gets to this day like far more successful than Xbox Game Pass right Nintendo is clearly with their uh, with their update schedule and the way they're releasing games like setting up to have a the definitive online gaming service, right? With games that people actually want to play uh, from a wide variety of different platforms on a service that's, like, affordable and is tied into, like, other things that people want to pay for, right? Like, it is far, far better than what Xbox is doing, right? And in the long run, I think Nintendo Switch Online is going to prove itself to be far more successful than Xbox Live ever was, right? But nobody wants to admit that. Nobody wants to admit that Xbox Game Pass is bleeding money, right? To get getting those all those big AAA games there on day one, right? Like how many sales did Starfield lose by simply being on Game Pass day one, right? I I guarantee you that like more than five million people like downloaded the game day one, had that played that stuff, played that thing for, like, two hours, realized it was crap, and then, like, uninstalled it, right? That is the pattern for a lot of major Xbox games. Like, I know because I did it with games like Forza, with games like uh, Halo Infinite, games, uh, all sorts of different projects, right? Like, I know this happens because I myself did it while I was still a subscriber, 
right? And that that's the key word here, like, was a subscriber. Like, I'm the kind of person who subscribes to this kind of thing. I am the target audience, right? I was legit considering that maybe, like, even if I don't buy an Xbox console in the future, like, Game Pass might be, you know, something for me, right? They had, like, all, all the Yakuza games on there. It was, uh, it seemed like... I would uh I would get some mileage out of it, right? But like you are better better off simply paying for the games, right? Like just wait for a sale or something. You don't need to have access to all of these games that you will never have time to play, right? Like there are just so many issues with Game Pass. It it's shocking to me that like the vast majority of the of YouTube and the gaming community like don't want to admit they exist. Like it's a lot like how Angry Joe is uh, is right now. Well, last year, last year he tried to sell us on this idea that like Total Warhammer Three is is the best strategy game this year. It, it stomps the shit out of out of Mario Rabbids. It is, it's amazing, right? Best strategy game I ever played, right? Like, he came out with this, and now, like, a year later, the game is known for having all these glitches, all these bugs. Like, they, uh, they're they having, like, major controversies with the, with the DLC expansions and stuff like that. And, like, Angry Joe has, like, kind of grudgingly admitted this is a problem, right? In, like, uh, hidden, buried in, like, those newscast videos. Like, he's not doing angry rants on them. He's not talking about this at all, like, in any meaningful capacity. But he has, he has acknowledged it right? Why are there so many people defensive of these brands, right? You have a lot of people, like, coming out and, like, defending Final Fantasy. Like, how many people came out and defended Final Fantasy VII R, right, when that came out, calling it one of the best games of the year? Like, how many people, like, we're legit seeing a lot of these people, like, come out and try to say, that, like, oh, I hope that Eris lives, in Final Fantasy VII R2, right? Like, that that's the new narrative now, is that, like, it, it seems like Square Enix knows... I remember when that was a joke, right? Like, actual fans hated the idea of, like, Square Enix bringing Eris back in some, like, contrived way, right? People hated, like, the very notion of that, right? And here we are, like, in the early stages of people trying to justify it, because... Worst po it, it was the worst possible scenario for the Final Fantasy VII Remake, right? Something people have been making fun of for years, years, and we're going to see Square Enix do it, right? We're going to see them do this and, like, completely undermine the integrity of the original game in order for, like, some cheap, like, glorious moment, right? The resurrection of, like, <laughs> of Eris Gainsborough, it's... It's uh, it's embarrassing, right? Like, uh, I I've seen so many people just just religiously defend projects for for dumb reasons. Uh, Spider Man Two is has had like the major defense force for that game right now are are woke activists, right? People who like the fact that Miles Morales is uh is 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 the main character, right? Like. Like, that's the main demographic of people who are defending the game, as opposed to, like, actual fans who are kind of just gotten bored of it or whatever. Like, like, where are the real criticisms towards these projects? Like, why exactly do you have to hunt and find, like, what people are actually saying about these games? Like, when you look at surface-level stuff, when you look at what the YouTubers and the streamers and the game journalists are saying, they try and tell you that everything's great, it's, like, it's a fantastic experience, this is a great title, like, you should definitely check it out, but then, like, even, like, checking Twitter or, like, Reddit or, like, 4chan, like... YouTube, like, you have all these better, like, outlets for, for widening what people really think, and basically everyone is, like, speaking up about all of these games problems. Like, everyone is talking about how bad Baldur's Gate 3 is, or how bad, like, uh, Final Fantasy 16 is. Like, where are the real, where are the real game journalists? Like, why are more people not talking about how Xbox Game Pass is clearly a failure, right? 
it's people aren't going to like admit it until it really starts popping off, right? Until like it really starts coming out just how expensive it is to own all these licenses, how expensive it is to maintain the service, and how and how much it's costing Xbox as a brand to to keep this running, right? Like until that comes out, until there's a big push within Microsoft to remove the Xbox brand, which we already saw in like 2013, like until Microsoft takes it upon themselves to completely axe the Xbox brand, acknowledge that it's completely worthless and that, like, nobody wants to see it anymore. Until that happens, you're going to have people pretend that Xbox Game Pass is a huge success, and that is extremely disappointing.